Hey, thanks for coming back to the Here's the Deal channel. You remember the story coming out of Brookside, Alabama? Well, there's way more to that story than meets the eye. First, let's roll the intro. And believe me, buddy, you're going to want to come back and watch this video. Cue the banjos. Here's the deal. I want to see really crazy stuff. I want to revisit Brookside, Alabama. Have you been to Brookside? Do you want to talk about Brookside? Yes, we're going to talk about Brookside, but I want to couple, I want to bring out a couple of very humorous things that I found. And I want you to I want you to see firsthand just how ridiculous the Brookside Policing for Profit Police Department has been. And that comes straight from this ABC News 40 channel, and the name of the video is Mayor Mike Bryan responds to questions regarding Brookside allegations. Listen to these allegations. The controversy playing out in Brookside shined a light on how police agencies in our state come to possess military-grade vehicles and equipment. We now know a state coordinator first vets applications before sending them to the Defense Logistics Agency Law Enforcement Support Office before final review. ABC 33. Okay, let me just let me just recap, okay? Before we get any further into this, the Defense Logistics Agency Law Enforcement Support Office is a real thing. So you've got these law enforcement groups all over the country, not just in Brookside, submitting applications for military vehicles to come into their town to support law enforcement. And one of the excuses for getting this military equipment is officer safety. Let me just show you this real quick. This is the actual, this is the website right here. Let me just center this so you can see it. Actually, I'm going to put it all, I'm going to put it on the screen so you can see where this comes from. Can I get that fit on there? This is from the Defense Logistics Agency. The, um, this is from a military website. This is www.dla.mil under Dispos Dispos Disposition Services Offers and Reutilization Law Enforcement. I'm going to drop the link in the chat room, and when this video gets done rendering, I will, uh, I'll make sure that I put it in the description in the pinned comment. It's something that you really got to take a look at, and I'm going to go over this stuff real quick because it has everything to do with what's going on, or at least has gone on in Brookside. It says, this is the Law Enforcement Support Office from the Defense Logistics Agency, the nation's combat logistics support agency. So this is the area where local, your local law enforcement can submit an application for, say, I don't know, an MRAP for your town, for your small little town. And remember, Brookside boasts a, a population of like 1,368, not even 1,400 people says provides law enforcement uh, activities, logistics, oversight, and support in the procurement and accountability of DOD excess property. But listen to this. It says the National Defense Authorization Act. Remember the NDAA under Obama? And it was re-signed and reauthorized by, um, actually, George Bush brought the NDAA, NDAA on. Barack Obama re-signed it. Donald Trump re-signed it. I haven't even heard if Biden did, but I wouldn't doubt that he did. But in the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, you can be jailed without on, on American soil. You as an American can lose all of your rights, be jailed without charge, trial, or due process of law just because they suspect you might have had ties to do something that jeopardized national security, according to them. They don't have to prove anything. You don't have to, you, no court, no trial, no jury of your peers. They can actually throw you into a cage based on the, what the NDAA says. And, and to hell with the Fourth Amendment is the way they see it. So it's in the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal years 1990 and 1991. Congress authorized the transfer of excess DOD Department of Defense property to federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. How comforting. Can you imagine Barney Fife with a, with a, a, a Huey? <laughs> oh, got my, you wouldn't be saying got my bullets. Like, where are my shells? Where are my shells? I got to tear up the town with my Huey. Through subsequent revisions, the NDAA for fiscal year 1997 established the Law Enforcement Support Office 
And that's what we're talking about here. Under this authority, excess Department of Defense property and equipment that might otherwise be destroyed may be conditionally transferred to participating law enforcement agencies across the United States and its territories. No equipment is purchased for distribution. You don't even have to purchase it. All you have to do is fill out. All Brookside had to do is fill out an application to the uh, to the Department of Defense, the Defense Logistics Agency for Law Enforcement and Support. All items were DOD excess equipment or had been held as part of reserve stocks until no longer needed. And then check this out. This is very interesting. Since inception, the program has transferred over 7.7, not million, but billion dollars worth of equipment that's on our local streets somewhere in America based on items, original acquisition value in fiscal year 2021, 196 million based on OAB worth of equipment that was conditionally transferred to participating law enforcement agencies. Items that are requested by the program include clothing, clothing, office supplies, tools, rescue equipment, vehicles, and small arms. Since program inception, less than 2% of equipment transferred are small arms and less than 1% are tactical vehicles. And look at this. More than 8,000 law enforcement agencies have enrolled in the program. They're like, man, buddy, go sign up. We could, we could strike it rich. Get an MRAP. Get a military vehicle. Get some bombs going over there in your town because you know we need it. But, let me, but, but wait, there's more. There's more. Listen to this. 40s Valerie Bell joins us now in Brookside. Valerie, how many of these requests does the office normally get? Stephen, the Law Enforcement Support Office received about 34,000 requests in the fiscal year of 2021. Of those requests, just half were approved and shipped. The other. <laughs> Listen, guys, 34,000 requests. Half of those were rejected. That means the other half were approved and shipped. That means 17,000 approvals for small town cities to acquire defense equipment from the Department of Defense. 34,000 requests. 34,000 requests. Just let that sink in. It's unbelievable. It's Brookside, Alabama, not Battlefield, Alabama. My gosh, you must have some formidable townspeople in Brookside to be breaking out armored personnel carriers. Listen to this. Half were denied or canceled. The Brookside Police Department still has several armored vehicles. <laughs> look, look at this. What the frick is that doing? On Look, let me just show you. Let me show you right here. Look, Brookside, Alabama is a town in north central Jefferson County, Alabama. Can you see this? Yeah. As of 2010 census, uh, the town was pop the, the population of the town was 1,363. What the frick did they need a vehicle like that? What the heck is going on here? Listen to this. Full station behind town hall. One mine resistant vehicle and four smaller armored vehicles acquired to help police the town. A mine resistant vehicle in Brookside, Alabama. Mine resistant. Uh, I can hear it now. Hey, hey, Sally, yeah, give me the Pentagon. I need at least a four-star general on the horn to take care of some of these problems over here. Hello, general? Oh, hey, how are you, sir? Look, we got some serious problems over here in Brookside, Alabama. Can you spare about a dozen surface-to-air missiles and a couple aircraft carriers? What's that? Uh, no, we don't have any major waterways near Brookside to accommodate those carriers, but... You can never be too sure what you're going to run into over here in Brookside. Can you just hear the calls? I mean, guys, they had 34,000 requests and half of those were approved and shipped. I mean, is the sky the limit? Are there limitations to what kind of battlefield equipment you can have in your small town? Out of just 1,300 people. Last week, the mayor's office announced the armored vehicles will be returned to the Defense Logistics Agency. DLA tells us it's up to law enforcement agencies to pay the shipping cost. However, those costs can be avoided if the state coordinator has another agency within the state looking for similar vehicles. 
DLA. Which right. means they don't even have to cover the shipping cost. They're, they're not paying for the equipment. And if there's a program in place and they find out about it, they don't even have to pay for the shipping if there's somebody else in your area that maybe needs a armored personnel carrier as well. Records show Brookside submitted 27 requests for vehicles and equipment. <laughs> Brookside submitted 27 requests. Between 2019 and... When asked about the acquisition for the anti-tank missiles and 15 high-performance Predator drones, the mayor replied over the phone, Well, you never know when you're going to have a couple of them jihadis planting roadside pipe bombs in the closest Dollar General parking lot. Now, I don't know what you city slickers call it, but here at Brookside... We call that a national security threat. We got to take that thing down. So we, we submitted our 27 requests over there to the DOD for you. But it's only to protect and serve. That's all it is, guys. Yeah, to protect and serve their policing racket. Because you remember, you remember this um, AL.com? In this AL.com article, they had already said that their policing for profit went up 640%. 640%. And uh, there was another, there was like a 1400% increase in, in towing violations. Yeah. By 2020, Brookside made more misdemeanor arrests than it had uh, residents. It went from towing 50 vehicles in 2018 to 789 in 2020, each carrying fines. That's a 1478% increase with a 1.7 tows for every household in the town. There's another crazy statistic about crime. It was like in eight years, there were only 55 major crimes. It's like a low crime area. What the frick are they doing? Putting in 27 requests to the DOD for armored personnel carriers. And what was that other, th what did they say that other thing was? Some kind of anti-mine, a mine resistant vehicle. But wait, there's more. 2021. The Defense Logistics Agency approved five of those requests, including three vehicles. The other 22 requests were canceled for various reasons or <laughs> systematically due to lack of availability. <laughs> if we had them, we'd have given them to you, Jimmy. Bobby, how's that order for those 23 Apache helicopters in that C-5 Galaxy with that heat seek and halo disbursement equipment? How's that coming, man? Looks like we got some new people in town, and I think Jim Bob started shoplifting again, so we need to get that stuff out there. Not to mention our population is about to swell to a massive 1,400 people, and I'm getting a little jittery that the people of Brookside over here might start interfering with our policing for profit operations. And you never can be too sure over here in Brookside. Where's the Department of Defense when you need them? God, these people, man. Between 2012 and 2019, Brookside made no requests through the program. We asked Mayor Mike Bryan in writing, what was the justification used to acquire them? His response, these vehicles were acquired for officer safety, but were never used for patrol. Acquire. We got mine. We got a mine resistant vehicle for officer safety because you, you never can be too careful in Brookside. It's like. You know, get Jimmy, Bob, and Frankie. They want to start a little still back in the woods, but we got a mine-resistant vehicle coming after you guys. This is hilarious. What's the Brookside City motto? A military armed society is a petrified society, and that's just the way we like our continuity here. We want your, we want your consistency, our our constituency to be petrified. You got to be fearful of us as we're riding down the roads, tearing up the streets with our mine-resistant vehicles explaining he understood that they were used for a drug house raid. <laughs> a drug house Well, that explains it. You got to have you got to have one of them MRAPs for a drug raid. Listen to this. Earlier today, I filed a FOIA request with DLA to obtain a copy of each request and the reasons for approval or denial live in Brookside. Yeah. Val so with that FOIA request, what's her name? Valerie Bell, oh, Valerie Bell, Valerie Bell here with the FOIA request is going to find out uh, which, which vehicles were approved, which five of the uh, applications were approved from B Brookside because there were 27 requests, five were granted and the equipment was shipped, but she's going to find out what the 22 requests were that were rejected. That would be very interesting. That would be very, very interesting. What are you getting ready for over there in Brookside? World War Three? That's crazy, man. Welcome to Brookside, the brand new militarized zone. Come by and visit, but we can't guarantee that you'll ever leave. You ain't going to leave, boy. Once you come to Brookside, you're going to be staying for keeps. I mean, we got to increase our numbers so we can get more militarized equipment.